Imagine making your bed, but there's a bunch of objects on the bed. It could be some of your clothes, it could be your dog, it could be your girlfriend, or maybe just a bunch of audio equipment. Doesn't matter. Point is, is that you throw the blanket over everything, or the sheet, and as it's floating high in the air, it starts to settle down. Gravity is pulling it down. But eventually, it settles onto all the objects on your bed, and it fits the contours of the bed and the objects on it. You could also think of this as like vacuum sealing or shrink wrapping something. But in this analogy, the blanket is the abstract representation learned by QSTAR or in the energy-based model according to the leak. Now, this, uh, in this analogy, the physical bed is the ground truth of the problem space or the, the real world model that you're trying to fit it to. And so the landscape of the real world model is the ground truth, and then the blanket is the mathematical representation or the abstract representation of the real world. And the way that this training works is that the energy-based model is trying to reduce the entropy or energy in the system, just like how gravity is trying to pull the blanket into its lowest energy state, which is the best fit overall on the objects on the bed. Now again, this is just an analogy. However, if the blanket is your model, once it is trained to and understands the ground truth of your training distribution, um, that training distribution could have temporal, spatial, mathematical, embodied, or even more abstract features such as emotions, semantics, and so on. But the topology of that model, of that blanket, can be extracted, and that is what you can interact with. That is the output. Uh, in this case, it's still outputting text, um, but of course, you know, we have the era of multimodal models, so and eventually you could output, you could translate that topological output to anything. Now, the topology is the simple mathematical map or representation of the abstract representation that you have trained on. Now, you can navigate around this map in the same way that you can drive a car around GTA or Cyberpunk or whatever. It is a, a simulated or a representation that is now navigable. And again, this is just my personal analogy. Uh, it may or may not be right. The leak could be true or false. We don't know, but this is how I conceptualize it. So in this case, if the ground truth or the landscape that the model is fitted to, the distribution, happens to be, say, for instance, a mathematical landscape of differential equations, advanced theoretical math, and quantum physics, and all that fun stuff, then this model could be used to solve new algorithmic problems uh, or new physics problems simply by following the contours of that topology to the correct location within that new topology that you have extracted. Conversely, if there is a temporal component, such as planning into the future, likewise, you simply follow the topology, the contours of the map that you have extracted. Uh, now, again, this two-dimensional representation is overly simplified. We're talking about a high-dimensional map. But still, you can navigate across this map to the correct location in time and space and whatever other dimensions that you have. And so I think that this is why QSTAR is so powerful is because it allows you to navigate through problem spaces more deliberately, charting your path, like you're exploring the, the wide blue oceans trying to find the island with the, with the uh, buried treasure. But that map can be anything from math to time to emotions to narratives, whatever. So this is how I think QSTAR works. It is both Q-learning. So Q-learning is the process of reducing entropy in the model so that it closely fits uh, and can predict the contours of the model or the landscape, and then navigation across that landscape or pathfinding via A-STAR. Now, again, this is pure speculation on my part, um, but I thought that this was really compelling. Um, and uh, <laughs> having discussed the leak with uh, Claude, uh, Claude says, yeah, this is a compelling enough model. So, you know, uh, take, it, take it for what it is. Take it with a grain of salt, but let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks.